So let's take that same equation we were just talking about in what is a table and let's apply it. Let's actually use it inside of Excel. So right now we can take a look and we see that same grid like structure I was just referring to. We see that we have the A column, B column, C column, all our verticals have a column. All of our horizontal rows also have numbers. Well, the first thing we did was we started by entering in some text. Now in A1, for example, I'll just put in the word subtotal. Now when I hit enter, that's all I get is I get subtotal. That's because this is considered text. Text is a little different than a math equation, a cell reference. For example, if I wanted to refer to the A column, you know, I will uh, we'll get to that in just a second, but I I that A is a, you know, that A is not text. That A for the A column is a little different. Then we put in tax and total. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I'm highlighted currently on A4. A4 is my active cell. If I want to move that, well, here's the luxury of the grid-like structure. All I have to do is click. Now, again, we said that we are going to put in uh, a tip calculator. So I'm going to put in the dollar sign 1250, and then I said 7%. Now again, this is where we have to deal with a math equation. If I just take my cells B1 and B2 and I put them in here, B1 times B2, nothing happens. You know, it's it's because it's inferring that what I just did was I typed text. Now, even though it says B1, well, again, how is that any different than this to the computer? It's not. So we have to introduce that equal sign. That equal sign tells Excel you are about to do a math equation. Now if I do B1, notice what happened. It highlighted B1. It's in a little color coding effect to just kind of give me a visual representation of what numbers I'm going to be working with. Now I said that I can't just multiply by B2. 88 cents, that's not that's not the price of what I had to pay. I wish, but that's not how it works. Instead, we start by saying B1. B1 is my uh, uh, base, my starting point, if you will. And then I included PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sal Sally. I added in some parentheses. Now, the parentheses basically are going to be evaluated first. Just because I put in B1 before doesn't mean that I can't put it in a second time. This is algebra all over again. I can throw X everywhere, you know, X A X squared plus B X plus C. Oh God, he's, ah, I'm remembering the hardships. No, that's what we're doing is I'm just saying I need to take that 1250 and I need to add the extra to it. That 7%, again, instead of me hard coding that in, B2. Close my parentheses, and as soon as I hit enter, what I should see is 1338. Excellent. The reason why we do this, though, is because now what's happening is Excel's evaluating B1 and B2. If I change B2, for example, say, I don't know, economy's still bad, sales tax goes up to 10%. If I hit enter, notice what happened. My total changed. If, for example, my subtotal was a little less, 19 or 9.99. As soon as I hit enter, I can see all of a sudden the calculations unfurl.